uh, with the Victory Deliverance Evangelistic Church located physically at 834 Hightower Road. And this is the first time that I'm on Facebook Live, so I'm going to wait and give a few friends some time to join in as we get ready to share. I get ready to share with you a bite-sized portion of what God has given me. And I bless the Lord. Today is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it and just magnify him for all that he is doing. And we just give God honor and glory today. It's good to see some friends already joining in and uh, already uh, there waiting. So we'll give it a few more minutes and um, so that we can get started and move forward with what the, what the Lord has given me today. And uh, it's good to know that uh, we are home and we can, at this time while we're stationed in place, that we can eat the word of the Lord, not only uh, on Sundays, which has really been good, but also throughout the week. So we give God the glory and the praise for all that he's doing. It's God's will to feed our entire man, uh, our whole man, body, soul, and spirit. So we're going to, we're waiting for a few more minutes and not just rush into the message because once I get started, we are uh, already out there and um, we will go straight through that which God has given me. So it's good to have you joining us. And uh, it's good to have you present and sharing in the word of the Lord on today. So we give God honor, glory, and praise and bless you for doing just that as we eat a bite size of a message that God has given me. And we give God honor and glory and we give him praise, glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless his name. Oh, my. We'll wait just a few more minutes, and, uh, and then we'll go forward from there as, we, as I adjust and as I get set, because, again, this is the first time that God is, that I am out on Facebook and uh, doing a live message and a live recording, and it is new, and, um, but I'm only out here because God compelled me to be out here today. <laughs> if he had not compelled me to be out here, believe me. I would not be out here, but because he has compelled me to be out here, I am out here today. So I give him honor and glory, and I give him praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started. And uh, and anybody else that join us, we are welcome them as they join us today. And we just give God the glory and the praise. And this is a, a message that God has really been dealing with me about uh, to share. And it's called a bite-sized portion. Uh, every time uh, as God direct me and lead me to come out, most likely I'll be coming out on Facebook on any other day other than a Sunday, unless he just leads me to come out and be on Facebook on a Sunday. Um, but this will be a bite-sized portion of something that God has given to me. And again, um, a bite-sized portion speaks of a piece of food, small enough to be eaten in one mouthful, just enough to get in your mouth and, and you're, you're satisfied with that. Um, the the Merriam-Webster Dictionary says a size that can be eaten in one bite. So it's not gobbling down, but eating it in one bite, really savoring the taste of what it is that God is saying, really digesting that, staying on that particular topic and not going anywhere else. There are various lessons that, um, principles that I could have come from and presented today. Family, about the family, it could have been about social relationships, conflicts, re resolution, the Trinity, spiritual gifts, faith, spiritual warfare in this time, kingdom principles, or principles about first things, or principles on sowing and reaping, and principles on forgiveness. So there is so much in the fullness of the Word of God that um, I could be speaking on today, but I'm giving a bite-sized portion, not on those particular issues, but on repentance, on repentance. So after we have looked at that word, um, a bite-sized portion is small. The synonyms are, um, is tiny, small, uh, many microscopic 
Um, so it's very small. And um, the word repentance is to change your inner heart about a matter or about God. It is to hate with a passion that which had you captivated. And I'm convinced that once we begin to hate with a passion that which had us captivated, we won't have a desire to go back to it. It is a, a 160 degree turn, a U-turn. It's and, and it's not just changing your direction, but your heart's got to change with that direction and with that turn uh, to the degree that as much as you loved whatever you were doing, now you hate it with a passion. So there are um, um, various things that we want to talk about. But in St. John chapter 6, verse 51, Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Jesus said, I died. We just had Resurrection Sunday on last Sunday. And the Sunday before that was Passion Sunday. Uh, the last week that, that really brought forth the last week of Jesus' life on earth. He lives, but he lives with, in heaven with the Father. So it is amazing to me that uh, no matter how long you have been saved or no matter what your circumstances were when you grew up in your family's household, it is not time for us to reflect back on the very basic things that we need to reflect on that is true and dear to the heart of God. So today I have a message of repentance. It is addressed to everyone. It's mailed with your name on it. The return address is from God the Father. It's coming straight from heaven. The messenger is yours truly. I'm just a voice crying, get ready because Jesus is coming back. John the Baptist cried and said that um, he was a voice in the wilderness crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord for his first earthly coming. My cry is prepare ye the, the way of the Lord that your heart is ready because Jesus is coming back for his people. He said, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. So Jesus is coming back for us. This is not our permanent home. We are strangers in this land and this is not our permanent destination. And the delivery method that God is sending is certified mail. You've got a sign for this package. Is yours with your name on it. You got a sign with a yes. You got a sign with a response. And that's the response that God is looking for. So um, going on from there, the Lord is saying to his people, see, Jesus prayed and Jesus in the book of St. John chapter 17, the word of the Lord says that um, Jesus prayed and Jesus said, uh, Acts, he said, Father, uh, I pray for those who that will believe on me after hearing the word of those that love me and that walk with me. He said, I'm praying for those that have not yet believed, but will come to faith in me, that they will be with me just as those that you have given me. And all that you have given me, Father, I pray that none be lost. It is not God's will for anybody to be cut off and separated from his love and from his forgiveness. And for all that Jesus has died for us on Calvary, God's will is for us to come home in the end and be with him. So I'm giving out the invitation, come home. What's, what's going on? Who's going to let you in to come into the house? Um, I, I'm familiar with the, um, the phrase that, you know, come home, we'll keep the light on for you. And that's what God is doing. God is saying, I'm keeping the light on for my people. And Jesus said, who's going to, the question is, who's going to let you in when you come home? Jesus said in St. John chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus said unto his, uh, to the disciples, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I'm the door. You want to come in? I'm the door. I am the doorkeeper. I am the one that will give you access to let you into the kingdom, to let you into the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Jesus is that door of the sheep. And he said, my sheep will hear my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. So the father is sending out the echoes of the son's heart 
that I'm standing at the door to allow you to enter in, but I need you to come. I need you to come home. I need you to come back, return back to your Lord and to your Savior. Jesus said in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let me tell you something, saints of God and people of God. Come to Jesus, all ye who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Our heart, my heart goes out to all those that are suffering grief, that are suffering loss, that, that um, are homeless, and, and all of those that are on the front line of caring for the community in day and time due to COVID-19 issues. My heart bleeds for those that are on the front line and those that have essential responsibilities. Listen, people of God, God wants you to live and not die. It hurts the heart of God. Yes, people are dying, but God wants you to live. And he says, come unto me, bring all your care on me. God does not want us so burdened and heavy laden with our cares and with our concerns and about loved ones and attending funerals. And what are we going to do? We're going to trust God because he said, let not your heart be troubled. In other words, we are have to get to that place where we trust him so that we will not allow our emotions and our heart to be so disturbed that we cannot proceed forward in life. Saints of God. He said, take this yoke and learn of me. It's time to learn of the Lord. For there are so many things we don't have all the answers to, but we can find rest in even what we don't have answers to. So I want to encourage your heart today. Find rest for your souls. Now, go with me to St. Luke chapter 15, verse is 11 through 32. If you look at that passage, this is about a father that had two sons. A father that had two sons. The youngest son said, Father, give me of my portion of my inheritance. It's time for me to leave. I, I, I got to get away from here. Everything here is too normal. Everything here moves a little too slow. I need to learn a little bit more about the world. The Bible tells us in that particular passage that the young son, the context of the message is that when the young son received his portion from the father and he left, the older son stayed back home. And sons and daughters, the context is that when you are full and life is booming and you have everything you need, you have possessions, you have power and you have wealth. God wants your heart to stay in tune with him. After the party is over and after the friends are gone, because the friends will disappear when the money disappears, if they are not true friends and you're empty, then what? On top of all that, a famine invades the world. After he has left home, a famine comes into the world. And he finds himself in want and in need. All, everything is empty now. And um, as COVID-19 has entered into this world and individuals are in want and in need, I'm telling you, God will supply every one of your needs according to his riches and glory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, what about this, 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 this nugget or this bite-sized portion of repentance? This son left the place of security and safety and wanted to test the waters of what I have not yet been exposed to. And then he, he, the father loved him so much, he didn't want to force him to stay home against his will. So he left home. He left the ark of safety. He left, let, let's say he left the household of faith. He left and went out into the world and started living his own life, doing his own thing and, and pleasing himself. And the word of the Lord says in St. In Luke 15 and 17, he came to himself and he was wakened. In other words, he was wakened out of the sleep of darkness that he had been living in for whatever period of time that was. And he was ashamed. Let me tell you, God knows how to deal with the shame in our lives. 
God does not throw us away as a rag and forget us because of the things that we have suffered in this world. He loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us, glory to God. And therefore, but we get caught up in the, I'm reminded of the song that Frank Sinatra sang, I did it my way. And the scripture tells us in Proverbs 14 and 12, there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but his end's end is the way of death. So this young man made his mind up, I will arise why should I sit here and die? Why should I stay in a hog's pen and not have the food I need and yet look to somebody to uh, pay me for taking care of their pigs? And then it was so bad, the famine in the land was so bad, he had a desire to eat what was before him. He had sunk that low. So he said, I will arise and go to my father. And that's what the father's voice is saying today. Arise and come back to your father, your heavenly father. And he said, I will confess I've sinned against heaven and before you father. And, and that's what the Lord is saying. If we have sinned, see God has, God can deal with the sin. Jesus is the remedy. <laughs> God sent Jesus as to pay the price of us being disconnected and, and disassociated with him. But Jesus reconciled us back to the Father. So now we, once we accept Jesus, we have peace with God. There is no more anger. God is not standing with a hammer in his hand, trying to get revenge on, on us as his, all of us were born in sin. All of us were shaping in iniquity. Then we start listing out the sins. But Jesus paid the price for it all. There is nothing that you have been dragged into that Jesus cannot pull you out of or have already paid the price for you to be uh, free and no longer captivated by anything that the enemy has done. All it takes is a bite-sized portion of repentance. Lord, just like this son, Father, I'm going home. I got to go home. I've been away. I've been away from the Lord too long. I've been away from the things of God too long. And your heart and your spirit is longing for the things of God, longing for the power of God, longing for the move of God, longing for the deliverance of God. Hallelujah. Longing to praise God with the saints of the most high God. He said, I'll confess my sin before heaven and before you. And then he made this statement, Father, you don't have to reinstate me as a son. Reinstate me as a servant when I come home. That's what I'm going for. He said, I'm going to say all this to the Father. without the In other words, reinstate me as a servant without the privileges of sonship. Glory to God. And the Bible says he left to go home. And when he left to go home and got to his destination on his way, and I believe the Father had been looking for him all along. And I'm telling you, saints of God, I'm telling you, children of God, I'm telling you, those of you that was like, uh, like, like, um, like Timothy, who grew up in a household and you had a praying mother and a praying grandmother. Timothy had a praying mother Lois and a praying grandmother, a praying grandmother Lois and a praying mother Eunice. And, and Paul said, Timothy, I'm persuaded this same faith is in you that was in your, in, your, uh, for, for, in your foreparents. Now listen, there comes a time in your life God is saying return to your childlike faith, no matter how much success you've had, no matter how many times you fail, because out of failure comes success. God is saying, return back to your childlike faith, just like Timothy, just like you know somebody in your house prayed for you. It could have been your mother, it could have been your father, it could have been an auntie, a grandmother, grandfather. It was somebody that prayed for you that you would know the Lord and that you would live for God. And you heard them call your name out before the Lord. You know the works of the kingdom. You understand the ways of God. You taste of the heavenly gift. You've had a bite-sized revelation of who Jesus is, and that's enough to keep you moving forward because he loves you with an everlasting love. So the Lord is saying, don't let what happened when you left home, 
calls you to stay away from home. Come home. His arms are outstretched still. He's saying, come home. We see the son's attitude. Now let's look at the father's attitude. In, in St. Luke 15, 20 and 22, the word of God says uh, that, that the father, when his son was a great way off, <laughs> a long way from the house, the father saw him. This really, this really lets me know that the father had a heart and an expectation for this son to return home. He was looking for his son. I believe his heart, uh, because the, the scripture says in the next verse that the father had compassion on this son that left home. He loved him. He never stopped loving him. I want you to know no matter who you are today, our heavenly father has never stopped loving you. That's why he sent Jesus. He loves you. And I will say that the father not the son. The Bible says the father, and I see this man as the heavenly father that love us so much. The father ran to the son that had gone astray. Glory to God. And the word of God says he grabbed his neck, threw his hands around his neck and kissed his son. Hallelujah. He was so glad to see this son return home. So glad that the son he had been praying for is now coming back home to be restored with the family that loves him, with a father that loves him. So God is saying, restore your relationship with him. Come home. Don't let nothing hinder you. No matter how broken, no matter how shameful, no matter what you look like, no matter what you smell like, I still love you. Amen. I still, I have a heart of compassion for you. I want you home. I want you saved. <laughs> and the word of God saved the father. This is the father's attitude. All the compassion. Ran and kissed him. Hugged his neck. And the father, and I'm sure the son was thinking, oh, daddy, let me take a shower. Oh, daddy, um, I'm not ready yet. Oh, daddy, I smell like the pigs. But the father didn't care. Because the father knew this was his son. See, you don't understand that God knows who you are and that he has put the faith in you to come home. He has put the faith on you to call on him. Because if you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be delivered. You shall be set free. You shall be saved from the things that want to hold you bound. But they cannot hold you. Because the father knows you have the faith in you. Just like Timothy. Glory to God, because you know somebody prayed for you. Praise God. And you didn't get where you are by yourself. The word of God says that the father said, all right, get my best robe and put it on him. Get the ring that I have with my signet on it, put it on his finger. Get sandals and put on his feet. Glory to God. And because when he took the sandals and, and put them on his feet, the father said, we're going to have a father's celebration party just for you. This is your party. This is your day. Take this bite size of repentance that this same man had. Father, I have, I have, I just messed up. But Lord, I want to come home. I have nowhere else to go. Nobody else don't want me. The Lord is saying, come home. Come home. Return to me. Return to the fellowship of your, of your heart. Return to me. Return to and be restored. For I've already forgiven you. Because see, God knows your heart. So this call is to anybody. It doesn't matter who you are to, to those of us in fivefold ministry. We need to keep our fellowship fresh with the Lord, with those children of ministers, children of missionaries, children of your, your mother, children of mothers of the ministry, children that, that, that now are adults. You were once young, but now you having to stand on your faith. Amen. Just as your parents had to stand on their faith. God is calling historians. He's calling entrepreneurs like the fisherman Peter. He's calling doctors like Dr. Luke. He's calling nurses like Deborah's nurse. He's calling CEOs and he's calling actors and publicists and historians and authors and politicians like he did Zacchaeus saying, come home. He's calling laborers. He's calling those that are mothers and fathers in their homes, sisters and brothers. The Lord is saying, come home. You've got a place to rest. You have not rested in the world. You've had trouble in the world, but come home. Come back to your peace that passes all understanding beyond your, your natural explanation. I've got peace waiting for you, and I don't want you worried or, 
or uh, aggravated about anything. It is no time to become suicidal when you have the father's arms outstretched still saying, come home. It is no time to allow yourself to be uh, come heavily depressed or wearied. Or if you have allowed it, get up, get out of it, put on a garment of praise and say, Father, I'm coming home. Father, I know you got a celebration for me. Father, I know you love me. Father, I know you will receive me. And the Father will in no wise turn you away. That's why Jesus said, I'm the door. I don't get permission from anybody else. I'm the door. I let you into my kingdom. I let you in and I let you out. I feed you and I'll take care of you. And you're my sheep. You hear my voice. You hear me calling you. Because you've got an enemy that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. So the Father's saying, come on. You've already tasted of the powers of the world to come. You've been around the, uh, the things of the king kingdom. You've seen miracle signs and wonders. You've heard and you've seen me answer prayer. You've seen me make a way when it looked like there was no way. You have witnessed these things. So come on home and receive and and you know what the lord is saying i got a seat at my table wait just for you i got get out of loaded bar you don't belong in loaded bar you don't belong there. even if your parent is no longer with you even as your grandmother or grandfather is no longer here they prayed for you they prayed that they'll see you again in heaven amen the lord is saying come on back home come on home the door is open come on home I, i've been looking waiting for you and now he's calling you by name with a special delivery saying, this is a certified message to you that I love you and that I'm waiting for you to come home. Glory to God. And Jesus love us so much. In Revelations 3 and 20, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, I'm knocking on the door of your heart now. I'm knocking on the door of your heart. If you hear my voice speaking to you, I will open the door and I will come into you. I'll come into your life. If you ask me, all you've got to say is, Father, Father, I hear you. Father, I hear the invitation. Come home, son. Come home, daughter. It's never too late. It's not too late. Come now while the blood is running warm in your veins as they said by our mothers of a whole, come home. It's time now. It's time to come out the wilderness. It's time to leave the world. It's time to return to the father that loves you. The word of God. He said, if you hear me speak into your heart, if you hear my voice and you know this is me giving you this invitation for this bite-sized meal of repentance, eat it the way you eat the word if you got to do it. And that is, he said, if you would ask, if you would open the door of your heart, Jesus saying, if you hear my voice, open the door of your heart. All you got to say, I'm not going to take you through a formal prayer. All you got to say, Lord, I hear your voice. Lord, I open my heart now. Um, my heart is open, Father. Jesus said, I promise you, I'll come in and I'll fellowship with you. In other words, I'll sup with you and you with me. We're going to have a fellowshipping time. We're going to change. We're going to turn things around. And what you've been experiencing, oh, we're calling it to an end. We're calling everything stop now. It's time for a new beginning. And it's not too late. It's time to be born again. It's time to be restored if you have never been, uh, if you have, uh, have just need to be restored. The Lord said, come on back home and be restored. It's a message of restoration for those that need to be restored, like the product, like the uh, son that had walked away. And it's also a time of new birth for those that have never ever, you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart. He says, if you ask me, I'll come. And you know what? We're going to have fellowship like never before. And he'll talk with you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. And he'll direct your heart. He says in Revelations 22 and 17b, and let him that is thirsty with that bread that bite-sized bread jesus said i'm the bread of life he gave his life on the cross for you and i he died that we might be forgiven if we accept his death as payment for our sins and our being separated from god because see i was one of those self-righteous people I, I thought when i was growing up as a young adult i don't smoke i don't drink and i don't chew so i'm all right with god but I didn't understand at that time, I was sold unto sin, that Adam had sold me unto sin. And Jesus came 
over 2,000 years ago and paid the penalty so that I don't have to pay the penalty of being separated from God. Thanks be unto God that he is the propitiator for the world, not for me only, but for the world. And we give him the glory. So whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. This costs you a total commitment. This costs you what you know to do wrong. Uh, God, walk away. And the Lord will give you the power to become sons of God. For as many as received him to them, gave he power to become sons of God. And saints of God, we repent not because we got caught, which is worldly repentance, but because of godly sorrow in the heart. Lord, I offended you, and I offended everything that you stand for. And Father, I want to, I want to be restored and come and take my place in the kingdom. I want to take my place at your table. The Lord said, I've got a seat at the table, and it's empty until you say yes to the Lord. So when that this mail has been delivered, now what is your response? Are you giving him a yes? Are you giving him, Lord, I surrender? Lord, I need you. Lord, you're my helper and you're my strength. The word of God tells us that the Holy Spirit is a consoler. He is a comforter. And that's what Jesus promised. Jesus said, I'm going to send you another, another parakletos like myself a comforter, a consoler, where you, you may be in the house and no one else is there. You may be single. You may be an elderly person. But Jesus is saying, I'm there. I will console you. I'll talk to you, and you can talk to me. Tell me anything on your heart, because everything that concerns, concerns me, I love you that much. I love you that much. And trust me that there is nothing going on with you that I can't handle or give you direction on how to proceed. God bless you. God keep you. I pray that you have taken the bite-sized message of repentance, taken a bite, put it in your mouth. Your mouth is full. I pray that you have chewed it. You have digested it, which is the word of God, that bread. And I pray that you have taken a drink that the Holy Spirit, by his grace and his love and his mercy, is washing it down, empowering you and bringing you through regeneration into the kingdom of his dear son. God bless you. Continue to listen to the word of the Lord. Continue to take bite-sized portions until we meet again. This is Dr. Bell saying the blessing of the Lord be upon you and with you. And God keep you by his everlasting mercy and grace. And nothing, nothing and nobody can keep you from God as long as you press forward in all that God has provided for you. Love you. God bless you.